15 years of pastoring and of birthday. We praise God for their example. We praise God for their leadership. We praise God for their strength. We praise God for the power that he has invested inside of them. We give God the glory for that. You know, uh, I was going back over some of my notes and some of the pastors, we, they're always making sure that we have uh, some backup. And a lot of times, even though they tell us, they admonish us about the word of God and to pray, but they always give us something that they can hang out notes with scriptures and everything that we can go back and read over for ourselves. But pastor, um, pastors, I happen to go back over some of the notes that you all, the handouts that you all gave to us. And as you were directing us, to always read our Bible. Amen. Always, 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 yes. because this is our guidance. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. Amen. And then you always acknowledge us that when we come into the house of God, lift up your hands, pray, give Amen. him praise. Yes. So, so as I'm there back yes. over my notes, I came with, uh, into a, when pastor said that their life is like a ship without a sail. Yes. You said, if it was not okay, for the goodness and his mercy, yes. you said uh -huh. that your lives would be like a ship without a sail. Yes. You said that it wasn't going nowhere yes. without Jesus. Yes. Yes. And, and my eyes just caught that. It caught it. And, and I said, Lord, thank you. Thank you for that. Because I think that was like in 2019, you know, when you were passing out there. But today, look at the honor and the favor and the glory of God on your life. We give you the God's name and glory. Amen. 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 And, and it's good to let us uh, let uh, someone know that God's word will keep you. Yes, uh, and yes, it will keep you no matter what time you are in, no matter what time in life you are in, it will keep you. It's good. It's good. It's good. Wow. It's good that, hey, they, they went on and said, hey, it, it, it's all about him because it, my life is like a ship without a sail. And it, we wouldn't be going nowhere. We're, we're going forward now. But you said we wouldn't be going nowhere without God. And we give, we thank God for that type of keeping. Thank you, Lord. Keeping thank God. You. We really thank God for keeping the man and the woman of God. Yeah. Amen. Because we are in here all because God seen fit to call them and use them. And look how they have inspired our lives, their family lives, family lives, community lives. Men of ecstasy, yes. their children. Yes. Look how many lives are being affected. Yes. Yes. The word going on all over the world wow. that people are hearing from Redeeming Lives Ministry. You all have affected our lives. And God said that He gave us pastors after His own heart. Yes. So God talks about the heart. Yes. I heard an old lady, you know, Jesus say, You can talk about me as much as you please. All right now. And she, she was an elderly mother. And she said, but as long as I have Jesus, she let him know all your talking and everything, it would not affect me. Because the more you talk, I'm going to bend my knees. Amen, 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 amen. And, and she would get up and she would sing that song. And I think by then she was in like her late 70s. She was singing that song, and, and she just walked uh, uh, from one end to another. But let me tell you, and she kept on praising God. I'm going to give this testimony of her. And she kept on praising God. Yes. God got a hold of her one night in Bible study. All right. God got a hold of her. She lifted her hands up and began to praise God. Yes. And the Spirit of the Lord manifest in her life. The power of God released itself. Where she was hungry, where she was thirsty, where 
Well, she had a boy because her husband was a pastor and he had already passed. But God, she, she, God was using her. His prayers, his prayers, his prayers was upon her life. And, and at that age, the Holy Ghost fell upon her. She began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the ability, the utterance. She got so drunk. And don't worry about drunk because it's in the Word of God. Yeah, it's in the Word of God on the day of Pentecost. It was like in one hour of the day. And, and, and they began to just uh, hey, fall out and, and just praise God. Yes. Because why? God had came through and he had filled them yes. with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes. So don't that the drunkenness uh, is not about uh, alcohol. All right. All right. Drunk in the spirit. Yes. That's what happened to her. That's what happened to her. She decided to turn it loose, no matter how what age she was. She decided to let it go and let go. Wow. And she got so drunk in the spirit, and this is a true story because I am a witness. We had to take her home. We had to take her to her house because God's spirit was so alive wow. Wow. on her. Wow. He had given her more more than what she ever could desire. More. I don't know what all you know her and her husband because they were married over 50 some years. That's a glorious testimony. Uh, they were married over 50 some years. But I tell you when God got a hold of her, we took her home. We took her home. Set her down. And, and, and she was still praising God. She was still worshiping God. Yeah. We knew she would be all right because, hey, you know, when God saved you and delivered you, you know, you don't have to worry about that. Wow. <laughs> so we already knew that he was going to take care of her. She'd be all right. And, and God uh, did that work in her life. And she wanted to be baptized. Now, look at this. Over about, I think she was about 78, I, I think so. She wanted to be baptized. She heard one of the young people in church talking about they got baptized. Yeah. And it caught her attention. And she went back home and she said that she had a dream. And the dream was God said to her, whatever you do, do it in words and deeds. She said that she had that dream. So she came back and she said, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Wow, wow. To God be the glory. She had already been baptized. But it's something about her mind that was made up. Yeah. You see, nobody didn't have to push her down to get the Holy Ghost. All right. Nobody didn't have to knock her down. The Spirit came in and right. delivered her. Yeah. So nobody didn't have to tell her, if you can sit under this ministry, that this is the requirement. No, 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 no. This woman had a mind and a determination of her own. Nobody could persuade her. And anybody who knew her, even her family, they knew that she said something. Don't worry about it. Wow. Don't worry about it. Wow. 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 Do not worry about it. We took her down in the water in Jesus' name. And not long the trials began to come on her life. She had to face it, the trials. Her doctor was saying that she had some heart problems. And, and so one thing from another. So we had to uh, go into, she had to go into a nursing home because her daughter, that's who um, was really the one that was uh, sort of like the one that uh, watched over her, but she lived up north. And so um, we was taking care of her as a church family. Wow, wow, wow. And um, she went into the nursing home and I remember just going there and sitting with her and loving on her, she would say, I miss my father's thing. She said, I miss it, the word of God. She said, I really miss my Bible study. She was so faithful in paying her tithes. Wow. She, she would say, make sure you take this back. Jesus. Mm. You know, nobody wasn't requiring no tithes from her. Not, not at all, she, you know, who would think that she would even be, you know. But that was her heart. Wow. Right. Wow. wow. That was her heart. And so she would say, take my tithes back to the house of the Lord. Take them back. And we'd take them back. And one day I was with her, and I was just rubbing her hair, just rubbing her hair, and her doctor came in. And he said, you know one thing? 
He said, this is the best medicine that you could get her. Wow, wow, wow. He said that out of all the medicine and everything that I have for her, he said, but by the way that you all, you treating her, you loving all her hair, he said that I could not have given her no better medicine than that. Sometimes, I tell you, you have to really continue to open your heart to pray and to seek God when he puts somebody like that in your path. She, she was like twice my age. But I can learn from her. And she said, I can learn from you. And I humbled myself unto her, unto God and her. I humbled myself. I humbled myself. All the time it wasn't easy because she was a little uh, feisty. You know, uh, one time she would call me and she would call me, I want you to take me to this place, take me to that place. I said, okay, but the day I'm busy, I can't do this right now. She said, oh yeah, you can do more than one thing at the time. <laughs> she said, you can do two or three things at a time. <laughs> I said, Lord, Please, God, if this is the way that you're going to get me to uh, uh, my, my tongue, because I had an edge on it during that time. I said, Lord, if that is the way you will put her in my way, because you know that I cannot disrespect the elder. Yes. Uh, you know I can't. I mean, she, she's trying me. She really trying me. <laughs> but I humbled myself unto wow, God. Wow, wow, wow. And God just kept on delivering. And then finally she went into her last stage. And she asked me, she said, now, all before I really didn't need you that much. Mm -hmm. She said, but now, I need you now. Mm -hmm. And she then had moved her from a, uh, another uh, nursing home. And I said, I hang on God, we have finished this together. Mm -hmm. Because you put it together. You gave us understanding. And you helped us to agree. And you followed us. And you took care of us. And you loved us. And you see, there was no misbehavior in this relationship. I would never want to take nothing from her. She would try to push it on me. Take this and take this for gas and take this. And I didn't want it. Because you know why? Because she had got hurt in her church. And she would tell me that I want to go to church where I was going. But all they want to do is get my money. She said that to me. She said that you don't never know, you know, what you can do to hinder a person from their, their, what they love and how, you know, you could see, you could call them anything you want to from the outside, but God knows the inside, the heart. So I, I was determined, no, 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 I don't want anything, not nothing. And everything that I'm already blessed, already blessed. At her final, at her final stage, we were to the nursing home. Me and um, pastors and sisters, we was all there, and we began to sing songs with her. And we knew that she was pretty much close to leaving, but we didn't know when she was going to leave. But we knew that she was pretty close to it. But we sung songs, and she lifted her hands, and she praised God. She gave him the glory. She praised him. And then what she did that I noticed, she took the uh, blanket and we was getting ready to leave and she put it over her head. She put it, she put that blanket all the way over her head and she turned her back, her side to the wall. wall. And I knew then, I knew then that the storm was passing over. Jesus. And that she had overcome Jesus. all the things wow. that God had brought her to and brought her out of. I, I you could tell that that was her last say so. Jesus. And it wasn't that next day, about before 12 o'clock, that next day, they had called us and told us that she had just wow. went home to be with the Lord. Wow. The storm, the storm was over. It was over. She could see clearly now because the storm was over. 
How many? That you, we never know what will be our storm. Amen. We never know will we endure to the very end mm -hmm. like she did. We never know if she asked you like Jesus for a cup of water, mm -hmm. would you know the meaning behind that love? Wow, wow, wow. You never know. Mm. You do not put your foot down on anyone. Jesus. No one. Don't put your feet on them when you think that, hey, maybe now they used to be strong, oh, but, but now they're at a place where they look like they, uh, uh, they can't really just fight that. Wow, wow. Don't do people like that. Jesus. Don't do people like that. Jesus. And I, we appreciate God that we had a beautiful home going mm. for her. Beautiful, because we knew all the songs and, and that she loved. We knew that her, how she praised God. We knew how faithful she was to the Lord, how faithful she was in the house of the Lord. She did not go back um, who came and seen her or not. I, I'm just being real. I'm just being real about it. She did not take tab. Mm, this day they didn't come. This day nobody. This day they didn't come and check up on me. This. She did not do that. Wow, wow, wow. She understood that if she was going to make it, she was going to have to cry to the Lord for herself. Right. Jesus. And, and she did that. And that's why, you know, this testimony, I can talk about it today. Thank God he's allowed me to talk about her today. Wow, 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 it's, it's coming through to God. Because... Everybody who knew her, they knew that she was there. Say, hey, how you doing? She said, kick it with that, huh? That was just who she was. However she felt, she said it. <laughs> and that's what she was saying. Well, I'm kicking, but nah. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> so I know the message is the prayer. Uh, uh, the title is The Power of Prayer. The Power of Prayer. And the uh, subtitle of this message is Prayer Changes Things. We, we are all called by God to pray. Everyone is called by God to pray. Uh, uh, you don't have to um, be, in, 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 be under uh, 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 your leadership of the pastor and say, well, pastor needs to tell me that I need to pray. No, God has already given that to you. And you need to know that you are called by God for everyone it's called by God to pray. A child that has no age group in it when it comes to prayer. If you know that your righteous God loves you and that you need uh, more than yourself, you need his help, then you know that you have a God that you can pray to. And God, he will show you just how powerful prayer is. You know, I didn't know sometimes how the Spirit moved and operated through prayer. Well, there was uh, one time that I was home, and, and I was bowed down, and, and I was on the uh, rug, and, and, and just put my head on my chair, and I was just praying. But when I turned around, all of my children wow. had, was right there, all around me. Wow. Wow. I looked, and I said, wow, wow. God was just teaching us early. Early, you know, he was putting that work on the inside of you, that foundation. Yes. I didn't know that prayer does that. Jesus. Mm -hmm. But I looked back and I said, oh my God, all of my children are right here, all around me. I knew right then that that was the hand of God. Mm -hmm. wow, wow. I, I, I already knew that, that that was God. But he was showing me, he was showing me how tender his heart is toward your heart. He was showing me that how that he can move in our life by his spirit, not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Yeah. Say the Lord God of hosts. Yeah. How that he can take prayer and that he can begin to move mountains. Yeah. 
in your life. Yes. Whatever your problems is that you're going through this day. Yes. Not tomorrow, because he told us take no thought for tomorrow. Yes. But whatever you're going through this day, this day right now, he wants you to know prayer. Yes. That get back in, with him in prayer. Because this is where miracles happen. All right, now. All right, all right. Miracles happen in prayer. Yeah. And if you want to see how God begins to intervene, don't stop praying. If you have stopped praying, start back praying. Because God is going to do great and mighty things for you. He's going to do it. But you, he needs you to go back into that prayer room. Go back on the altar. Get back. Jesus. He knows that in this day and time that the enemy has come in. And, and he want to take away a, a prayer. Wow, wow. He, he don't want you to pray because when you pray, God begins to operate in the supernatural realm. Yes. And your answers begin to come when you pray. Yes. When you pray, your answers, you are in the presence of the almighty God. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. And he loves us so much that he wants us to come daily. Yeah, he, he told me to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, I want you to come daily wow. unto him. Yes. Uh, you know, aren't, aren't you glad when we have uh, Redeemer Life's ministry and they're so open to world, the word of God and the heart of God and how the man and woman of God it, it is open to what God wants. Amen. What God wants. Amen. Well, today God said, let's come back. Okay. Come back to prayer. Come back to prayer. And in Luke 18, 1, he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not to lose heart. He said, you should always, always pray. You see that testimony that God used me to give of this elderly mother. She knew. She, she felt that her doctor did not have to tell her what hour of the day that she was going to leave here and go to heaven. Wow, wow. She knew. Wow, wow. She knew it through prayer. That's why she followed him. Follow me as I follow Christ. Yes. That's why she followed the Lord. Her husband had already gone, but she was still left behind. And she was willing to get everything God had for her, even if it came to a vessel that was two times under her age. Wow. 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 See, you can be set in your ways. You can be so set in your ways and you can miss the flow. You can miss the flow. No, I, I'm sure that with her wisdom, I didn't know uh, half as much of what she knew, you know, being married 50 years. I'm sure that I didn't have it like that. But one thing about I did here is to learn how to respect. Respect. That's something that's missing today. Respect. It is so missing today. I remember that when we was taught, when you go into someone's home, you come in, and before you go reaching for things, you ask them first. Respect that man and woman household. Don't go into their house and, 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 and just look all in their cabinets and, and, and like you live there. Don't do that. That is not showing respect. We was raised to uh, do that. Train your children up. Don't let your children run all around and keep things over and, 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 and uh, spill things all on the floor and dragging food everywhere and juice everywhere and everything that just tore down. Stop it. Stop it. That is up to you to take charge of that discipline. Spoil the child. Spare the rod. God didn't tell you to, in this day and time, you better be wise. 
Better be wise. You have to be wise in this day and time. You know, because they're looking for anything now. Anything to try to distract the word of God. So he did not tell you to abuse them. But he surely did show us like he teaches us. You disobey me, then my laws or my commandments or how I operate through your life, then don't cry to me, I want, I want, I want. I want, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Oh yeah, do you? Do you? Well, what about when God said obey, obey your parents? You're not above them. Obey them. Parents don't provoke them, teach them. Teach them. Don't, don't, don't be uh, tell arguing with them and over and over again. Our parents didn't do us like that. They didn't have to tell us five and six times. Amen. They, they, they told us one time. And, and, and they meant what they said. Now it's up to you. Try them if you want to. But they said one time. One time, you know, uh, to whoever's listening, I hope this don't seem hard, but if it do, then this is what God has given me. Because of the fact that um, these children, uh, they need God now. They need, they need God in their life. They, they need, they need, they have gotten away. They have gotten so far away from the principles of God and, and what God's word has to say concerning their life. And they need God. Yeah. They need the word of God. Yeah. Now the word of God will do the work. It will work. It will work on your behalf. If you allow the spirit to direct your path. If you listen to the spirit. If you listen to him, he'll be right there for you. Yes. If he tell your child to be home at a certain time. They shall obey you and respect you, and if something come up during that time, they should call and let you know that something has come up and, 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 and we're in traffic and or something. Uh, and, and, and you know where they tell the truth or a lie. All right, all right. You'll know it. If something about it, you, you just gonna know it. Oh no, they ain't true. Uh -uh, no, no. They, they're not caught up in the traffic. No, <laughs> no, and, and that's what that discernment comes in. You have to be able to discern. God put uh, all of this in the church. He put it here so that if someone, if a thief come in, somebody should be able to discern. Hey, wait a minute, this this person right here, uh uh, I'm picking up something right, something that's not right, something that's not right. That, that, you know, now this is the way that God wants us to knit together. Don't, don't go out and, and backstab and talk about the man and woman of God or anyone in the house of the Lord. This is not what he's talking about. But he said be able to discern good from evil. Wow, wow, wow. This is what he's talking about. And, and, and when you discern him, you, you, you have a pastor that he's able to sit down with you because I know our pastors give us big opportunities to open up and to express ourselves in the house of the Lord. That they're even you know, what the gods is God, you know, uh, if God talked to you, God talked to us. So, you know, whatever God is saying, we're open to hear. We're open for your ideas. You know, we want to make sure that the house of the Lord is functioning together and, and have a good spirit. So, you know, our pastors tell us that, uh, hey, we'll even pass out information. And, and, and you all can just write down your ideas, your thoughts, and, and, and surely God will move on it. Because pastors already see things. Yes. They, they see a lot of things. They, I, they see it from God. Amen. You know, sometimes the people are preaching the word, and then they step on your shoes because they're right in your home. Then you want to put it on the pastors when somebody called the pastor. <laughs> Somebody called them. I know who it is. And, 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 and so they look at it like that. But God calls the pastors. And God shows the pastors about their people. 
And when he show them, then the pastor is willing to un open up and understand to God's people. And if you're praying on one mind, one accord, then you're going to know that's a confirmation. You're not going to look at it as something that, uh, uh, well, maybe it's, it, it, it should be me doing this, or I, I should be the one doing this. No, no, no. If God had not allowed you to come in and, and to put you uh, into a ministry that you are thinking you're ready for, if you're not, then it's the pastor's job wow. to open up to you and, and show you show you according to what God is, is, is speaking in their lives yes. to help you grow. Yes. Now, if you're disobedient and sensing at home, then, you know, uh, a lot of times, uh, you know, they say uh, sometimes but, but the church, just different faces with the same problem. Wow. 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 But what I'm saying is that God is the chief cornerstone of the house. Yes. But he give us pastors. Yes. He give us these leaves. He give us that. Yes, that the church could prosper. Yes. That, that's the means. That's why. Wow. God is, God is good. And in, um, in uh, Luke uh, 18, 2, it says, There were a certain city and a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. He didn't fear God, the judge didn't, neither did he regard God man. It, it really sounds like the world today, really to me. <laughs> now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me. So, uh, uh, she she was uh, she was weary about uh, what was going on, and she said that she needs some justice from my adversary. Now she called the adversary. Now let's make sure that we might divide what is the adversary and what is not the adversary. All right. Because a lot of things we can say too much credit for. Yes. And, 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 and it's not him at all. All right. So that you know, if God give us something and tell us to be wise through us over uh, finances or whatever, yeah. then if you take it and explore it and, and, and do what you want to do, yeah. then you come back and cry, woo, uh, avidly, avidly, me quickly yeah. from my adversary. Wow, wow, wow. Too much credit. <laughs> Too much credit. Wow, You're wow. right. This was no adversary. This, 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 this was your flesh. And that's what's an enemy to God. It's your flesh. If, if, if God give you something and you're not handling it right, if you get your brand new car and, and, and you got paper, french fries, <laughs> soda, bread, hamburger, somebody else, hamburger, heart. <laughs> then... <laughs> Who would you put that on? <laughs> Jesus. God can't get no glory out of that. Yes, yes. He can't get no glory out of that at all. Yes. And then you up hollering in the church, I'm waiting for my boo <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting on my boys, boys, bad boys. <laughs> I'm waiting on my boys. Yeah. Oh yeah. But how long would your boys could step into that 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 house or step into that car? Wow, wow, and, wow. and your boys can't even get in because he gotta just pull out knock it on his trunk. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't know how you call that waiting on your boy is. Jesus. That might be waiting on somebody just, you know, uh, don't mind spending a little time. But serious business type marriage. Wow, wow, wow. You know, looking at you as the virtuous woman. Mm. That type of woman. I don't think Boaz, not according to what I did in the Bible, 
<laughs> uh, that's not the type of virtuous woman that he saw in Ruth. He, he, that's not what he seen. He seen one that was very obedient to her mother-in-law. Thank you, Lord. Very obedient. Whatever she told her mother-in-law, whatever her mother-in-law told Ruth, then Ruth was willing to come under the God that she served. That's right. And the God that she served, she seen how that her mother-in-law was so well blessed and taken care of, and she even had favor. She had favor. Well, I was, she sent a word. All she had to do was speak the word. Jesus. And when she spoke the word, then a servant was right there. They wow. said, oh, yeah, I know who she is. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said real well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I understand. No problems with her. Yes. Uh, write a check. Yeah, we're willing to uh, hey, make sure that she has everything that she needs, that she be prosperous. So what she did... Uh, Ruth got under that generational blessing. Yes. Yes. That, that, that generational blessing. Generation. Stop calling things the curse when God has already called us blessed. Yes. Yes. Stop that. Stop calling things stop uh, stop calling things blessed curse. Stop it. Take that root. Wherever that root came from. Don't admit yourself, submit yourself to those curses. When God has delivered you and said that you are blessed, you are the head and you are not the tail. You are the lender and you are not no barrier. Come on now. Stop going along cursing the things that God has already said you are blessed. If you're blessed, then you are blessed in the field. You are blessed when you go in. You are blessed when you come out. You are just blessed. Even the world, they know how to get that word going on. Jesus. Oh, yeah, they'll tell you in a minute. Hey, how you doing? I'm blessed yeah, I and highly favored. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they would definitely tell you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they might tell you, I remember when you was uh, doing this and doing that. But then they this stuff up, but I'm blessed uh, <laughs> and highly favored. <laughs> <laughs> and so you better you better understand that hey if you when you bless the Lord you you don't have to argue about it you do not have to do it uh, uh, there sometimes you may be in the parking lot and uh, you got your blinking light on and you just getting ready to get that front spot uh, <laughs> right right to your door <laughs> right to the door of the parking lot this man I mean I got this spot and then just when you getting ready to turn in. Somebody else, <laughs> somebody else, right in front of you, get that parking space. Now, what are you going to do, church? <laughs> See, in here we get real. <laughs> we get real in here. <laughs> what are you going to do when you already knew that you was ready to park right in there, get right out, go to this right by the door, get everything you want to do? Easy going. All right. Easy. Yeah. But will you be able to still recognize that you're blessed? Yes. Would you still be able to humble yourself? Yes. Yeah. Would you still be able to say, if I got to park all the way at the end, I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm blessed. So I, I'll let them have it. If I got to go all the way down to the end, maybe the exercise is good this day. All right. <laughs> but I am blessed. I will not let the enemy use me because he is the author of confusion. Yeah. That's who he is. Now you can know that you're blessed. And, and, and go in that store or do whatever you have to do, come back out with smiles and, and, and still be in the spirit. Or you can try to defeat your blessings. Your blessings that God already had for you. Already had for you. But was your mind renewed? Was your mind renewed to know that I'm blessed? That I'm blessed and, and, and that I can keep the right attitude. Yeah. Keep the right attitude. Because God, is, he's already fixed it for me. And if you know God has already fixed it for you, 
You know, and he's given us this word because he knows everybody's not there, but you can get there. Right. You can get there through prayer, yes. through killing the flesh. Yes. You can get there if you're willing to obey. Yes. You will eat the fruit of the land yes. if you're willing and if you would obey. Yes. If you will obey who God has already called you to be. If you will obey, obey to his voice, my sheep will hear my voice, and not another will they obey. If you will obey to God's voice, God's voice, then he will begin to lift you up. He will begin to use somebody with your ideas. You know, or I had a dream about doing this, and, and I have many ideas, and and uh, I'm going to have my own business, and, and, and I'm going to let God use me to be a blessing uh, toward what he had for me, that I will, my need will be met, and that I will seek God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. Yes. And he said, I'll add the rest of these things. I'll add the rest of all these things. I, I'm going to add to you yes. if you seek me, right. if you let this mind be in you, yes. which was in Christ Jesus. Yes. But greater it is in you than he that is in the world. If you will wait patiently upon the Lord, if you will pray and allow God's word to pray through you, then you will have whatever you desire. It's coming. And a lot of times when it comes, then you think that it's, it's, it's all for you and, and yourself. And you find it that God has blessed you to become a blessing. Yeah. To become. Yeah. And, and, and when you begin to uh, let God work on you like that, yeah. then he, he can begin to work in those fruits of the Spirit yeah. in, in your life. He can begin to, to cultivate uh, that work that he called to do. If you've got a high temper, then if you allow him to move you out of that flesh and every time you see yourself getting uh, uh, mad or angry or disagreeing, if you allow God to see, sometimes the hardest thing it is to judge yourself. You know, you all, you know, it's easy to sweep around somebody else. But what about your own? What about taking inventory of your own house? And if you can sweep around your own front door, then you wouldn't have room enough to go and be so busy with somebody else's home. Because God first starts at your house. You can like it or not, but if you want to be who all God and everything God has for you, and you want God, uh, His grace is sufficient for you, you better take care of your own home. Yes. Yes. Don't have time for nobody else. Amen. No one. I don't have time. <laughs> I don't have time. Uh-uh. No. Uh, uh, I'm not a garbage can. I would not be one. Don't bring it here. Don't bring your garbage here. I'm not one. Not one. No. <laughs> not one. And, and, and that's what God is, that, that's how God is working in our hearts. Because He wanna He wanna uh cleanse and wash. He wanna He wants you to have clean hands. Alright. You know, in, in the book of laws that when the prophet had to go to uh the throne, if their heart wasn't clean. To the, to the altar. If their heart wasn't clean and their hands wasn't clean, then if you didn't see them come out, doing, doing it, and you didn't see them come out, you could watch the clock, but if you did not see them after a certain period that they came out, then you knew what had happened. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. They were dead. Yeah. Wow. Because they did not take God and sanctify themselves how God said, sanctify yourself. And, and so they, they, they did not come out. 
I'm glad that God said that, you know, that he give us the church for this day and time. He said call seven people, seven men of a good report, you know, to help do the work. Because, see, uh, in this day and time, if, 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 according to the law, and if I had to walk like that, I, I, don't, don't come over with me. You're talking about a man. <laughs> you're talking about a uh, hand sensitizer. <laughs> You tell me seven feet. <laughs> if it had to be like that, you know, I would definitely make sure that. Thank you, Pastor. I would definitely want to make sure that my house is in order. Yes. Wow. Yes. You know, uh, I wouldn't play with my life like that. No way. I would. I would make sure that my house is in order. If I had that type of responsibility on my life. You better be glad that we're in truth and grace. Amen. And we're not under the law. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Let's be glad about that, church. Jesus. Amen. 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 God, God, God means what he's saying. Yes. Especially in this day and time when the heart of God uh, is about souls. That's where the heart is of God. It's about souls. God is soon to come, and the reason why he has not come back, even though we say come quickly, Lord Jesus, because we're really seeing some perilous times and seeing a lot of things that's going on. And sometimes people say, I don't know how much more can I give or can I take. But God, he, he's waiting on the church to wake up. Amen, Pastor. He's waiting on the church. To wake up. Yes. Because the miracle is souls. Amen. That's it. He had, yes, he had all other miracles. You know, you can say my testimony, hey, somebody was in a car and, 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 and the train came by and, and they was able to escape or they was able to escape a car wreck. But the miracle was when you got out of that wreck. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. That, that was the miracle. It wasn't so much of looking back and seeing how much this brand new car, you know, uh, it, it, you know, looking all over that and seeing that is it bent or oh, my car hollering and screaming about these material things. Wow, 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 wow. The miracle was when one person's life was spared Amen. and they are able that now their soul God can deal with them. He, he can deal with them a little better now yeah. because he didn't take their lives. So souls, 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 church. Souls, souls, yeah. That is the heart of God. That's, it. That's, it. That's the heart. Souls, souls, souls. To not take the Bible and feet over someone's head. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that. Um, because that would just push a bug away. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But I'm talking about let your house that God has cleaned, let it represent how he wants you to open it up and as you pray, yes. then he will show you yes. how to reach this person. Yes. Yes. He will show you their needs. Yes. Yes. One, one sinner said that, hey, uh, uh, before you feed me uh, the word of God, I'm hungry. Mm. He, he meant that he, he was hungry really natural. Right. He, he said, I'm not coming to your church, but right now I'm just, I don't have any money. Right. And I, I'm just hungry. Now, you know, you, you can tell a true disciple how would they handle that situation. You can tell. Just because they said that uh, they spoke it in the church, that would you just give me some water or give me a sandwich or just something. Uh, but then you can tell. You can, you can tell. Well, you just come into my church because you think every time uh, you come here, then we're going to give you an offering or give you this. Yes. You can tell. You can tell. A soul calls. A soul calls. In, in, in the book of Acts, this is where the first church did. And, and I'm just going to read through it. Uh, 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 because this is how it did it. And we know that uh, even with the widow woman that she wearied uh, uh, the judge and she did it continuously. And, 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 and he got tired of her. 
And, 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 and he said, avenge her right now. Right now. Pay her. Give it to her. Because her consistency was what bothered him. Wow, wow. That, that's what bothered him. That's what weirded him. That she kept on coming to God. She kept on coming back. Over and over. I would not take no for an answer. You tell me no today, but I'm coming back tomorrow. You tell me I can't have this, but I tell you that I can. You tell me that you want to kick me out of your club, and I say I got a daddy that I can talk to. Amen. I can talk to my daddy, and you can't kick me out of anything. And, and by the time I get through rearing my father, my help, because he don't mind. So by the time I get through telling him about all of my troubles, yes, yes. and all that his words say that I can be and I can have and I can do, yes. Lord, you said it right here in your word. Yes. Prayer is just a reminder of conversation and talking to God through his word. Yes. You said that I can have these things, Lord. So I'm going to weary you. I'm going to weary you. And two, it comes to pay. And, and we have to be that same way. The enemy don't stop. He doesn't stop. He wake up with, with uh, plotting and, and try to come in and hurt, steal, kill, and destroy. He does not stop. Why would you stop? Why would you stop and be consistent with God? All right. Why would you stop? And, and why would you weary him? And, and, and weary him and, until your answer comes. Yes, yes. Lord, Lord. Comes faster. Yes. Comes faster. Because God already said that we can do it, we can have it. It belongs to us. Yes. The Bible is for the church. Yes. And, and if we seek him, then it's for the limits for the world. Yes. But first, it comes to us. But you're so busy peeking. Wow. Nitpicking the word of God. So busy picking it. And, and, and instead of yielding over to it and knowing the response, so this is my heavenly father. This, this is my heavenly father. And everything that he tells me is not always going to be what I like. Yes. But he set me up. He set me up. For the blessings of the Lord yes. that is up on, in, in, on my life. He just set me up for it. Yes. So you mean tell me I'm just going to be nitpicking about everything Jesus said? Mm -hmm. Jesus know how to write parables on, 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 on the ground. Yes, yes. Je Jesus. I didn't see. Even though uh, uh, he was all man. But then he could talk to a, a woman. At the well. Yes. And he can, he can talk according to the, the blessings that she couldn't see. Yes. Now what have happened if she went nitpicking? Yes. Yes. What would happen? Who is he to talk to me like this? Mm. Who, who is he to tell me that uh, 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 the fifth husband is not mine? Who is he to, to uh, expose that? My life. But you went nitpicking. Instead of saying, wow, I perceive that this is a prophet right here. I perceive that this man, he knows all about everything. Marriage. He knows about everything. Everything. And, 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 and yes, mother, omnipotent. And he's able to come in. He's able to help you through it. He, he's able. No wonder that song is so powerful. And, and, and in this day and time, God is going to bring a lot of songs. He have to. He is going to bring a lot of songs now. Because we already know that uh, Satan, uh, he, he, he just went along and and he knew that, you know, that all power is, was in the kingdom given to God. So he knew what worship was. Yes. Yes. He already knew he was over the worship. Right. So he knew about the worship. Yes. So now he has perverted the song. Right. 
and, 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 and people are going along with anything. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, you know it's silly crazy. Wow. You know, you know it. But then you just agree with them spirits. You just believe in that. Well, Jesus, I'm telling you, he's going to come in and he's going to do some work with the songs because he knows that people love music. Yes, and, and, yes, and, 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 yes. and music is a blessing. Yes. The music uh, 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 will, will come forward and it, it will uh, allow your ear to realize that in a song yes. that you can go back to like Solomon. You know, and the songs of Solomon. Well, there were so many beautiful connections with Solomon in the song of Solomon. I mean, he, he just up, he just up everything. How beautiful, beautiful are you? He, he just went on it and, 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 and let, let, let those songs come forward. And, and, and it caused you to think differently about yourself. Think differently about God. A song. A song. And God said he's coming, he's coming back, but he's going to restore back unto him. And he's going to operate with these songs. So when you begin to hear these, these real songs come forward now, you're going to know that that's God. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it, it, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. God, God shut down the enemy. He, he might not know it, but God is shutting him down. <laughs> and if he thinks he's still moving and having his way and, and not considering that God is the way, the truth, and the light, I don't know. It's a reverse on that one. Him. God is coming in. He's coming in. He's using who shall ever will. Let him use you in your life. And I'm just going to read a little this from uh, about the first church. And the first church was the book of Acts. And that's where the first church began. And, and I'll just tell you uh, what God seen and how he worked with them according to their belief in the first church. Acts, uh, okay, here it is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So you have to just, hey, uh, that don't mean because you're up here that you're perfect and you get everything right. Work with it. Work with it. That don't mean, let's not be nitpicking because that don't mean that at all. Extreme family support. Thank you. Thank you. The Word of God tells us one who wins souls is wise. Amen. Acts 2 38, it said, then, then Peter said unto them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. Okay, this is where the first church uh, uh, started with. That they were going to repent of their sins. That uh, they was going to recognize that uh, who his name was and how the deliverance came. And, and there's no other name like the name of Jesus. Yeah. And, and so they were going to recognize that. And, and, and then in uh, Acts 4.12, it says, Neither are salvation in any other, so there is no other name whereby in heaven that we must be saved. That's Acts 4.12. So he said, giving them one man, but uh, there's no other name. That's salvation. We must be saved. Yes. Um, God, God began to just want his word to be like a lamb unto our feet and a light unto our path. Acts 2 40. And with many other words, he testified and exalted them, saying, Be saved from this perverted, perverse generation. So God wants to be saved from what's to come. Because he said this is a perverse generation. Yes. I mean, they are so wicked. Yes. You know, when it comes to God's will and his word and changes. 
They don't, they, you know, they just don't want to uh, uh, put God where he, he is. They put his name where it is. Don't want to do it. And, and, and we're living in an uh, unholy, unthankful, truth breakers. You know, we're living in this time. Don't be deceived. We are, we are really living in this time. And we have to be about uh, uh, doing God's will. Acts 2, 41. Uh, then those who gladly believed his word were baptized. They were baptized and they were about... There was about 3,000 souls in that day was added to the church. Now, 3,000 souls were added to the church. 3,000 in that day and time. 3,000 souls were added to the church. Well, that is a lot of souls. Yeah. Yeah. That is a lot of souls. And Acts 2.42 and they were continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and in the fellowship. So they were steadfast in that. Uh, they, they were serious. They worked hard. They were serious about what God spoke and what he said to his apostles. They knew that, that, that God was able to use their lives. And, and they knew that if they put their life on line for Jesus, then they didn't lose their life. But they was, their life was saved. Yes. Because ain't nothing you can do for God and, and it's a loss. Yes. Not anything. Yes. I said to God, I didn't say to people. I didn't say to men. Yes. Let's, get a, let's, open, let's get a clear in mind. When it comes to that, because sometimes in the world they have said so much about the house of the Lord and, and the faith that God has given them to the saints. Mm -hmm. So let, let's get it out of the way so we can be willing to uh, answer to what everything that God said that we can do and what we can have if we come together. If we stay humble and, and we receive his blessing, yes. we can come together. And, and God will be able to bless the house of the Lord Amen. just like he said that he will. Yeah. God will do. Yeah. It don't take a whole lot. Jesus had 12. What was a devil, but it was for purpose. So it, but it doesn't take a whole lot for God to move in to bless and to do his will. And that the power of God will come in and people with lives will be changed. People lie. People begin to want to come back into God. Come get connected back with God. Because they know that it's nobody can do you like Jesus. You need Jesus. You need everything that he has for you. You need it. You need it. God is so good and, and, and he is so, so worthy of our praises. And when we get up in the morning, he wakes us up. That should be the first thing. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It should be the first thing. Yes. About Jesus. Yes. And Brother Malik, um, I know that uh, God is doing great things in your life, and, and that Pastor is always encouraging you, and he'll see you on the school campus, and you'll tell us about, hey, I seen Pastor today, and Pastor said in, in great encouragements about uh, my life. Yes, yes. But Brother Malik, um, in Samuel 3, 1 to 9, Samuel was a boy. The word of God was rare in those days. See, in Samuel days, the word of God was rare. It was not a widespread revelation. Not in, in Samuel days. So Brother Malik, while Samuel was sleeping, the Lord called him. And he said, Samuel. And he said, here am I. So he ran to Eli, his daddy. He ran to him. And sit here. And said here. And said, here am I. Now, he, 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 he heard his name being called as he was asleep. So what he did, he ran to Samuel. Because he heard that voice. 
And, and he went to him and he said, here am I, just knowing that, you know, that I, I called you, mm -hmm. just knowing that. So here am I. And, and so he, he was told, I did not call you. Go and lie down. Don't give up to what God is saying. Don't give up on him. Don't give up on anyone, your loved ones, anyone, your family. God said don't give up on them. Yes, yes. He said don't give up. Eli didn't give up on Samuel. He did not give up. And even though the word was, uh, uh, it, it wasn't a widespread during that time, but he still knew how to seek the face of God. Yes, yes. To, to recognize that I, I know how God had called me in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I know, you know, that how he had woke me up at maybe 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, whatever in the morning, and, and I heard his voice. And, and I had to get up, but I had to get up and pray. You know, he, and he would show you things before it happened. If, if something going to maybe happen in your life, then God will try to get you because, uh, there in that place with Him, so you can intercede. You you can intercede on, on whatever behalf that is getting ready to happen. I had it happen to me so many times. I'm telling you, intercessory, uh, prayer warriors. That's that's what I'm talking about. A prayer warrior. That is one of the highest call. Prayer warrior. God intercedes. On our behalf. Hallelujah. So, when, when you call to pray as a prayer warrior, you, 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 you don't want to play around with that. Amen. You really don't. You want to you take that just like God used you with anything else, just like you work on your job and when I work 40 hours and, and, and when on Friday I want my money. <laughs> <laughs> you don't play around with some things. And, and 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 that's just the way God works. And, and prayer, if He put it on you to be a prayer warrior or an intercessor, uh, and that's not that's not nothing for you to be weary about. Because God, if you say that He owns your life, then He should be able to use it in any way He wants to. Um, I really don't put my uh, phone on on the, on my hook in, in in my house not at night. I really put it right beside my bed. And, and, and I really, uh, God bless me to tell him, no, call me at any time. Any time. Any time, call me. Because whatever your need is, God is concerned about it. I had one that called me this morning just before I came to church. Since then, would you pray for me about this? Wow. I said, let's pray. I don't need to know nothing, nothing. I'm just, let's do it. That's what an ancestral prayer is about. God was uh, uh, one of his disciples to get uh, around to him with that. I mean, you know, what could be more desperate than you can really leave here and, and you know that you can really be, be crucified? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that's not a desperate need. Mm -hmm. But he said, nevertheless. Nevertheless. Wow. He knew the flesh was weak. Wow. And he said, but the spirit is willing. Yes. Nevertheless. That's what intercessor is designed to do. That don't, that don't put you above nobody else because ain't nobody above no one. Okay. But if that if God seen fit uh, that you could be used in in that part of your life with Him, do it and, and do it for the Lord. Don't you don't have to get paid for praying for nobody. You know, so uh, go have a number such as the have and give it to you in the name of Jesus. Now something wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you charge him for everything, wow. <laughs> everything you charge. Wow. What about your reward? Mm -hmm. What about your reward that God's going to give to you in heaven? What about that? If you're going to take everything down here, what about that? You know, we have a reward to look forward to. Now, if somebody just love you enough that uh, they just want to bless you, then don't refuse that. If they just want to bless you, but make sure it's, it's like that. Mm -hmm. It's that they just want to bless you. 
they, 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 they say, you just bless my life so much. And, and, and I just want to bless you. So you receive that type of blessing. You receive it. Don't refuse it. Because you just helping somebody else get a blessing. Amen. I, I say charging and receiving a blessing. That's two different definitions of what God is speaking. So receive that blessing. So I'm going to put the blessing in your hand. Don't refuse it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That, that is from God. Receive your blessing. So then, uh, again, uh, uh, Brother Malik, the Lord called him again, Samuel, and he went again to Eli and said, You called me? He answered again, Son, I did not call you. Go back, lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the word of, of the Lord. He didn't know yet uh, the word of the Lord. He didn't know. You know, if he had knew the word of the Lord, you know, he probably would have knew. Oh, okay, now I know what this, where this voice is coming from. This is God working with me because he got this great work that he's calling me to do in my life. So he want to know how, no matter what time he awake me, would I respond back to him. Because a lot of times when the spirit awake you, uh, all that sleepness and everything, it, it, it has to go. It really do. You would be surprised how you get up and, wow, I'm, you know, I don't even feel tired. Because why? The Spirit of the Lord was at work in your life. And, and so, um, uh, what happened is that Samuel um, uh, 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 knew that he didn't know how to respond back to God. But then Eli, he, he realized that, oh, well, let me realize that. This is not uh, my voice that Samuel needs to hear, but Samuel needs to hear and know that it's God calling him. Not me, but God. Y'all stop running the pastor with so many calls. All right now. <laughs> stop. It don't, make, it, it don't make no sense. I mean, my God, you, you was in church. You heard the word. Uh, they gave you uh, they gave you everything that you need. Why do you keep on wearing the pastor? <laughs> About pastor, I didn't understand. What, what did they mean when they said that? You heard what the word said. You heard it. You you heard what God was speaking. You can't keep on relying on the pastor to do the work that God has called you to do. And it's up to you to do. Quit that. This is not the way that this house is being taken care of and we loving our pastors. Oh no, he, it, it's not like that. It wasn't no way. Don't be money, pastor, 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 pastor. No, 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 no. Hear from God for yourself. Amen. And he realized and, and, uh, that it was God. And, and so uh, uh, Eli told Samuel, the next time the next time you hear your name being called, all you have to do is show up and say, Lord, here am I. Brother Malik, all you have to do, walk in it, show up and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. And so we appreciate for this day and this word that God has given us concerning prayer, Concerning answers in your life, concerning you being obedient, concerning know that God, He's a miracle working God, but the greatest miracle of them all is, is your soul being saved. Yes. That's the greatest blessing of them all. Mm -hmm. And so we just want to love our people. Yes. Because, you know, the harvest is plentiful, yes. so, but the labors are few. Yes. So we want to be. A, 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 a labor for the Lord. Because we know that the harvest is plentiful. It's plentiful. It is plentiful. God is just saying it. He's saying it again. He's saying it again. He's saying it again. He said that the labors, they are few. He said, but the harvest is plentiful. Now, if the first church could see it, Ozion. 
What's the matter with you? Oh Zion, oh Zion. Wake up, oh Zion. What is the matter with you? What does it hurt to say a little prayer before you go to school? Just a little prayer before you get out uh, 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 and, and, and get on that campus. What does it hurt you to just uh, take your family to, together and say before we go uh, to school that we want to, come on, let's pray together. It don't take one or two minutes to do that and tell them you love them and have a blessed day. Don't you know that goes where you go? Don't you know that and you're obedient? That that go where you are? That is not a whole lot of time. That is no more time than uh, getting on that campus early and, and, and doing all that talking before you enter into your classroom. I'm just putting it real. Because when something could happen, you're going to need some protection yes. and you're going to need to know how you can get to Jesus. I know you're going to get to your parents. I already know that. But I'm saying, will you, will one, be able to get to Jesus? And say, oh no, this won't happen to me. And this won't happen to my classroom. This won't happen to my classmates. I know Jesus is faithful to his word. And I know that he prayed, he prayed for me. And he, pray, he, he answers prayer. And prayer changed things. Because it changed you and I. So we want to give God the glory and say thank you for our pastors and celebrating their 10 years of anniversary, church anniversary, and the wonderful job that they're doing in the name of Jesus and how they're reaching the lost and winning the lost and how they're reaching in their own household, how they're reaching and telling us how to keep God's word faithful, how they're saying to us that, uh, that just like a ship without an anchor, that you would be nothing. You would just be floating around. Not one thing. God bless you. We love you. Hope you enjoy the word. In Jesus' name, amen.